Welcome. It's going to be a great day. Today we're going to talk about setting up your Apple Pencil to work with Procreate effectively. You don't need to connect your Apple Pencil to Procreate. As long as your iPad is connected to your Apple Pencil, you can start drawing immediately. First, we're going to the iPad settings, and then we're going to scroll down to Apple Pencil. The blink and green dot shows where you can switch between the current tool and eraser by double tapping. And you want to have only draw with Apple Pencil selected. And you can scribble and procreate as well as other places on your iPad. So make sure that it is on. And once that is on, you see that it allows you to test it. So let's test it. Here's their demo. And here is my writing. I can write. OK. So now we know Scribble works. So let's jump over to Procreate, where a lovely snake charmer is waiting for us. Go to the paintbrush icon to open up the brush library. Let's go to inking and select a brush. And Brush Studio is where the magic happens because this is where you can customize the brush to fit your painting and drawing style. I'm just going to briefly show you what's available, but this is an area where you definitely have to play around and see what you like and don't like and how you are going to customize your brush. So we've selected Apple Pencil and we can change how the pencil responds to pressure either by size, opacity, and other things here, including the tilt of the Apple Pencil. Here I've changed the size and made it a little smaller. Hmm, not much difference. Let's make it really small. And now we can see a difference. There are some changes we make that we will see immediately on the brush stroke to the right. Others, we have to actually draw a new brush stroke to see the effect, as I did here with the size. Now let's take a look at the stroke path. We can change the spacing of the brush shape so we can see the individual shapes. Because the stroke is not one single line, it is individual shapes, which you're going to see in just a little bit. Streamline is the smoothing of the brush stroke. Jitter distorts the brush stroke. And fall off determines how the stroke will fade. Taper determines how the beginning and end of the strokes will either come to a point or a round shape or the thickness and opacity. And here we have the actual shape of the brush tip, which we can see up close now. The smooth line is an illusion. All of these shapes are closely packed together to make it look like one connected line. Grain shows the texture of the brush shape, which we can edit. With rendering, we can change the way the strokes and colors behave when a brush interacts with the canvas. The wet mix also determines how the brush interacts with color and how color interacts with the canvas. With color dynamics, we can set the brush to change color, saturation, brightness, and more based on the pressure and tilt we apply with the Apple Pencil. Dynamic makes changes based on the speed of our strokes. Properties are settings that change how the brush looks in preview in the brush library. About this brush is where you can name custom brushes that you've created after you've made all the changes in the previous settings. Okay, now let's take a look at what this brush looks like. Even though I didn't make any changes, it's good to see how the brush reacts before you start doing anything because you may like it as it is. I'm applying pressure to get thick and thin strokes. Less pressure and the stroke is thinner. More pressure and the stroke gets thicker. We can use the little arrow in the bottom left to undo strokes or other actions. And a little banner comes down from the top that tells us exactly what is being undone. And we can use the arrow that points in the opposite direction to redo what was undone. And we can choose the eraser tool to erase part or all of the stroke. 
Now let's click on this wrench icon to make our last few settings to the Apple Pencil. Let's go to Preferences, then go down to Edit Curve Pressure. So here's the curve I have that allows me to make thick and thin strokes with certain brushes. We change this to change how the brush responds to pressure. So I brought mine down low. So now no matter how much pressure I apply, the stroke is thin only. I'm putting it back up. And now when I try again, you can see the thick and thin is responding to the pressure I'm applying. The last setting is gesture controls. And with assisted drawing selected, this is where within Procreate, we can use the Apple Pencil double tap. When we turn that on, we can now switch from the eraser to the tool we are currently using and back again. Now let's see how the Scribbler works inside Procreate. Any place you can input text is where you can use Scribbler. For instance, if I want to change the name of this practice layer, I can select it and start scribbling. Well, actually writing a new name that I want, which is the demo layer. Whoops, I thought practice was selected, but the blue on blue deceived me. So let me definitely select it and do this again. Demo layer. Now go back to the gear icon and choose add. And we're going to add some text. I can tell the text is selected because it's in blue outline. And I'm going to write woman. Now we see that it replaced the previous text. And check this out. I do not even have to write inside the text box. I can write outside of it, snake and voila. Okay, it didn't capitalize snake, so it's not perfect. But still, this is very handy, so you don't have to use the keyboard or connect a keyboard to your iPad. Okay, that's all I have to say about the Apple Pencil. So let's go to the bonus round and look at the layers of this drawing I did. First, let me deselect them and go down to the sketch layer so you can see how this all started. Actually, there was a messier sketch layer before this one. Now we turn off the sketch layer, turn on the woman layer, turn on the right wall layer. And with the wall shadow, you can see this is all solid black. So that with the layer above it, that's my white line that's going through the shadow to help show the paneling and texture. The left wall was supposed to be in perspective, but I messed up because the chair was supposed to be at an angle which indicated that it was up against another wall. Instead of looking like a left and right wall and she's in the corner, it just looks like one wall, which was not my intention. Things happen. What are you going to do? Now to finish off the bonus round, let's look at what we can do with the layer specifically. Lock, duplicate, and delete. By dragging to the left, we reveal these commands. I will delete the text layer. I will unlock the left wall. Now I will lock the left wall. Now I will try to draw on the layer that has the left wall. I am unable to do so because the layer is locked. This is to protect it from getting any strokes that don't belong there. Now I get the chance to unlock the layer with this little message. So I can unlock it here and now I can draw on the layer. Then we go back to the left wall layer and see that it is unlocked now. As you can see, when the layer is locked, there's a little lock icon to let you know that the layer is protected. OK, that wraps up our look at the Apple Pencil and layers. Well, that's it for today. If you feel you learned something, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And remember, just create.